Volvo V60 versus Volvo V90. I'm Thomas, this is Autogefühl with our comparison of the Volvo Estates. Which one is the best? They have been famous for their estates since ages, definitely. This one here, the bigger one, Volvo V90. You can see here in the front, this is the inscription model with this vertical fins. Force Hammer LED lighting signature, really beautifully done. And in a rather brighter color for today. So the more the sophisticated styling, but there are of course different trim levels available. And for example, with the V60, we have the R design Polestar look today. There's a special Polestar tuning here. And also in the normal R design, we have the black dot structure, same headlamp unit, and just a little bit, you know, slimmer here as for this dimension, contrasting black color. So we have the sporty look here, the sophisticated look right here, but you can also make it the other way around, but definitely, from the first front look, which one is your favorite? Pricing wise, by the way, approximately a difference of about 10,000 euros. Hidden here in the Swedish woods. No, not Sweden today, still good old Germany. <laughs> here, the V60, you can see the rear perspective is way more agile and slimmer, so to speak, if you compare it here to the V90, which just looks more bulky. But the tail lamp signature is actually quite the same. In the rear, we have these Fake exhaust tips, Autogefühl fake exhaust police active here because the real exhaust is on the inside each. This is again the sporty styling, here the more subtle styling for the inscription model. The length for the V90 is 4 meters 94 or 194 inches. Hey, that's easy to remember, 4 meters 94, 194 inches, right? <laughs> but the interesting thing is the V60 minus 18 centimeters or minus 7 inches, so that's then the length difference between these two. And would you have guessed that both cars are gray? Okay, this one, right? But this one? This one is called Pebble Gray from Pebble Stones. And this one is called Osmium Gray. Yeah, interesting. And wheels? These are 19 inch wheels for the V90 today. Of course, bigger ones are available. And we have 20 inch today here in the sporty Polestar styling for the V60. Special Brembo brake calipers here, of course. That's, you know, not a direct comparison now. We just have this sporty package here today on the V60. Now it's time to fight with the trunks or the boots and here the V90 has a trunk length of around 1 meters 15 or 45 inches that's a little bit longer than the V60 you will soon see that and the width here a little bit more than a meter or a little bit more than 40 inches and the height is here you know at this cover right there around 17 inches or 40 centimeters cool thing here is that's here. In both cars, you can put this one up to split the trunk or, for example, secure a backpack or something. And then you can lift this one up with gas struts. You know, with one gas strut. This is really nice. And then you have your charging, stable, uh, charging cable here very well stored in there. And my favorite feature, would this be the reason I would go for the V90? Here, this cover, when you close the trunk, there it is. It automatically goes back and then up again. This is missing here with the V60. This is manually here. So um, it's up and then it's up. And when you close the, the hatch, it stays like this. And then you start driving. See, I can't see anything in the rear, you know. So that's not the best feature than is for this case. Normal length here is just a meter or 40 inches. So here, this part that is missing then here in the V60. That would be the difference. However, the width is almost the same with a little more than a meter or 40 inches and also the height is at 17 inches or a little bit more than 40 centimeters is just the same and here there's not so much space underneath that's why they have put the charging cable in the separate bag then here today we have both vehicles as plug-in hybrids the v90 t6 around 250 horsepower from a combustion engine plus around 90 horsepower from the electric motor then at the rear axle and acceleration figure around six seconds and here the v60 with the t8 so a little bit stronger with pulsar tuning over 300 horsepower plus the electric drive and then we are around four and a half seconds in the acceleration figure however if you go for both vehicles as a t6 each then they are not that different in the acceleration mode and the pure electric range also the same around 40 kilometers or 25 miles that that's not too much it should be more 
And the reason why it's the same is the bigger car has a little bit bigger battery, 12 kilowatt hours, whereas the smaller car here around 8 kilowatt hours battery. Interior time with the car key and the V90 door closing sound. Oh, let's do it again. Mm, one of the best door closing sounds recently. Just awesome. I love these details. That's also why you should be on our channel. Then here, see the interior, typical current Volvo interior. Steering wheel commands here for the cruise control, right side for the volume. And these seats here are the so-called tailored wool seats. So not entirely animal free but a share of recycling fibers and wool. So that's already a step away then from animal skin. Sadly, in the US market, they do not offer any animal skin alternatives at all for Volvo. That's the main problem. Here, you can see inside of the doors, nice matte wood. That's beautiful, Scandinavian or Swedish design. Soft touch here at the upper part and taking a seat. And here, of course, you have this sophisticated, you know, big sedan or big estate feeling. So super comfortable. And my favorite thing about Volvo vehicles is that the ergonomics of the seats really top notch. So I always feel very comfortable when seating when sitting here in and out, up and down for the steering wheel. Also smooth process. So we see and feel a very high build quality and headroom wise with 1 meters 86 or 601 still leave some headroom here. Although this one here is equipped with panoramic roof and uh, this is also a really nice one because it opens quite widely. Interior overview for the V90 left side 12.3 inch digital instruments. Actually quite easy and clear to read. You also have a head up display as an option and on the right side nine inch vertical infotainment screen. Soon more to that. That's the same for both vehicles. And once again, the matte wood use here. These veneers are really beautiful. Of course, different stylings are available for that. And the only real knob is here, but this has a special feedback and also volume feedback, so to speak. This is a special inscription crystalline shifting lever. You can also go for a normal, more subtle one. Start stop engine button, driving mode selector, and then you have some more space underneath here, very well attached, and two USB-A connections for your smartphone. Infotainment screen, let's start with the most important feature. Here, this special microfiber wipe. It says here, ah, two seconds, hold it two seconds right here. And then you are in the cleaning mode and we can start cleaning without any function happening. <laughs> yeah, gotta know that. So let's go back to the real functioning system. You have this app view left side. You can also go to the battery hold, the battery charge mode. That's important for the plug in hybrid models. Right side, you can, for example, have sound experience difference. So that's really interesting. We're either in the studio mode here for the Bowers and Wilkins sound system or the concert hall mode, Gothenburg concert hall. And this one has like this really rich surround sound and beautiful, love that. Great sound system. Wow. I would like to listen to music now, like for the next 10 minutes or so. And the map here, not the most modern view, but it's responsive and fast enough actually. Infotainment system, both the same for both vehicles. Now the V60 interior with the same key fob, door closing sound, also really good, but I found the V90 door closing sound a notch better. Inside of the doors, also soft materials, really nice build quality, then sporty R design contrast stitches, and also the steering wheel is to me a little bit more likable with these contrast stitches. Then these are the R design sport seats, and that doesn't make any sense here. Animal skin on the inside and then fabric on the outside, if they do such a mix, it must be the other way around, of course, to be more breathable on the inside with fabric and then stylish details in leatherette, for example, on the outside. But this mix here of fabric here and then animals on the inside doesn't make sense at all. Not sure what the designers have been thinking there. Hmm. However, for the V60, especially in the European market, you can get really nice fabric seats in the momentum trim, for example, and also these so-called city weave seats. They have a very special seating pattern. Yeah, dividing in love or hate, but I really love them. But you can also go just here for normal black fabric seats with the V60. Steering wheel, also control up and down and out. It's just the same. And now the question is, how different does it feel? And it's also comfortable because Volvo is using really good ergonomic seats in the V60. The sport seats are the least comfortable ones, so I would not go for them. So don't go for the R-Design if you want the best comfort. Headroom-wise, 
little bit less here in the V60, but overall hmm, the difference is not that huge, but definitely in the V90 I feel I have a little bit more space to move around here in the front. So definitely just from sitting in the front, I would go for the V90. In the overview V60, you see it's almost alike with the digital instruments once again. Here a view where you can have the map in between. Also additional head-up display is available. Here the 9-inch vertical screen, that's also the same, so really not too many differences. However, here the styling elements, this is more, yeah, a little bit more central in a way. You remember that this wood element here in the V90 was like there attached on here. So I think a little bit more modern look here for the V60. You can also get this here in wood if you want the wood look. Here in this case, this aluminum mesh. So interior-wise from this overview perspective, really not too many differences. Here you can also slide back for the cup holders. This area is also, you know, quite alike driving modes and when you fold this one here up the same space you have underneath. Now the back seat comparison once again the beautiful bright styling and also here the wooden inserts for the V90. We also have manual shades here for the rear passengers. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, uh, yeah, there we are. <laughs> so and then also nice bright fabric inside and Let's see how much legroom do we have. So that's what I have here. One meter 86 or six foot one once again. So that's totally sufficient. Not too much considering the car length though. And headroom, yeah, also quite close, but still works, of course. Here the head restraints, you fold them up. Yeah, really comfortable seating position. Only thing is here a huge middle tunnel. So I'm um, sitting in the middle part here. Yeah, I mean it works definitely, no problem. Put your legs on the outside each so for five tall adults this definitely works and then yeah let's <laughs> hop further to the v60 oh that's interesting not too much of a difference right maybe just a little difference but definitely i mean the length difference does not go that much to the leg room but rather in the trunk that's an interesting finding also with the headroom, yeah, pretty much the same. So not too much of a difference. The seating comfort in the rear does not differ too much. Here, by the way, the middle console right here. Some cup holders. There we go, ski hatch. Pretty interesting. Oh, and I love these special Polestar yellow contrasting seat belts. And by the way, a clever feature available for different Volvo models is this one here, this integrated child seat you know for the ones that are already a little bit more grown up so easy to install and also to put down again <laughs> i'm locked i'm locked inside thomas number two has to help me so today a double thomas team thomas reporter and our thomas cameraman so yeah someone's gotta save me go around the car and let me out and then we have to deactivate that child lock but of course good that it's available such a function here at the inside of the driver door, you can then activate or deactivate it. Welcome to Thomas's comparison driving lounge. And we start here in the pure electric mode. That's of course cool, all silent. That's why you can appreciate the plug-in hybrid vehicles. And most of the time I would try to use these modes in the Volvos, soon more to that why. But here, first of all, acceleration in the Volvo V90. We go to power, sporty driving. Now the combustion engine is also set on and I can use maximum power both from the combustion engine and also from the electric motor. We start at 40 kilometers an hour, rear wheel drive, then with electric, front wheel drive, combustion. Let's go. It's 150. And top speed, 180 kilometers an hour, 110 miles per hour. Electronically limited here at Volvo. And I mean, for most markets, it doesn't make a big difference. For Germany, yeah, maybe a little, but that's totally fine with me. Um, I don't need to race a Volvo further. Here now at higher speeds, still good noise insulation. Lane change at higher speeds. Yeah, the steering wheel is, whoa, um, not that cool to control so it doesn't give me the best connected driver and car feeling 
it is very easy and soft to control, but again, not the best controlled feeling. And we have the air suspension here, optional air suspension at the rear axle that is available for the V90, whereas it's not available for the V60, so that's a suspension difference. And indeed, the rear gives them a softer, more comfortable feeling. However, here at higher speeds, yeah, definitely the car says, yeah, I don't want to be raced, you know? So the maneuverability at these really high speeds, if you compare it then to a Mercedes E-Class, to, um, to the Audi A6 or to the BMW 5 Series, yeah, that's definitely worse. However, that's also not the goal of Volvo. Volvo rather wants this more sophisticated rolling feeling, feeling safe due to the extensive assist assistance systems, safety systems, and the whole brand approach doesn't go in that sporty direction. And that's totally fine. So, driving mode, pick the hybrid mode, then the car decides for itself, you know, when to use what. Battery is almost full, so I see in the instruments there's the small, like, you know, like a um, fuel drop. And when it's filled, then the combustion engine is on. When it's empty, it's off, as, at the mo as it is at the moment. Here, when it's dark, you can see how it looks like with the screens and so on. More ambient lighting here would have been cooler, um, I think, definitely. Then setting the cruise control either, there's normal adaptive cruise control or there's the pilot assist. And when you have the pilot assist activated, then also here in a more complicated situation, the lane is being kept actively. And you see here, so far a smooth process. I don't have to do anything basically, just keep my hands at the steering wheel just for safety precaution. And the pilot assist is really doing a good job, both then adaptive cruise control and also active lane assist at the same time and I'm overall really happy with that. So now we're all electric and as long as I keep it in a certain threshold here, you can see it in the instruments, it stays pure electric. Only if I do the kick down, then you hear that the combustion engine is hopping on and yeah, people have been asking, is that good for the engine? Uh, no. <laughs> no, that can't be good for the engine, that it suddenly is turned on and then giving full power, so no, definitely not. It's not that it's destroyed by that immediately, but of course, if you want to take care of your vehicle on the long run, yeah, um, probably try to avoid that. Now, when I'm on the brakes, regenerative braking is happening. I can also go to a B mode, so then, the difference is here in the normal D mode, it's rolling. In the B mode, there's more regenerative braking, and I would recommend that why not lifting the lifting your foot off the throttle and you already have some more regenerative braking also when you're going downhill for a longer period of time and we have here the blind spot monitor really nice integration in the side mirror so overall as for the assistance systems really well done not all of them are standard a lot of them for example also the autonomous emergency brake meanwhile it has to be mandatory but Volvo even made it standard before it was mandatory by law and then you can also upgrade and for example to this pilot assist the more sophisticated system and I'll stay now in the hybrid mode and see how the acceleration at high speed turns out here That's 140 kilometers an hour. See here, even if you don't go to the sports driving mode, you can still get a decent acceleration just by kickdown. And if you go for the T6 models each, V90 and V60, they also have approximately the same acceleration figure, so that doesn't make too much of a difference. The difference really V90 and V60 is, speaking now from this bigger perspective right here, this one feels a little bit more sovereign and let's say you know settled on the road because of the you know with, with the weight and also of the size just when running straight and that's of course when you have longer motorway journeys of course really cool and maybe gives you a little bit more comfort i really like also the air suspension at the rear that also just gives you a little bit more dampening i do feel a difference between rear axle and the front axle definitely it's not that it would be annoying all the time, but just when you have a lot of car experience then you would notice that it's a little bit stiffer in the front and it's a little bit softer than in the rear. Now here on the brakes, they're actually finely tuned, so that's cool. 
So we can't expect the biggest performance here of these two liter four cylinder engines and also you know consumption wise they are not that good they're really not that efficient they're quite old so engine wise not that good steering is also not the best connected feeling these are my two flaws here for this vehicle but on the other hand good noise insulation really sophisticated comfortable relaxing driving feeling excellent seat form as for the ergonomics and it's always such a you know almost a relief driving this vehicle and i really enjoy driving it especially on longer road trips or something because it just brings you so much comfort and really calms you down and with the scandinavian design matte wood here and so on so once again a really cool experience so my countryside driving here and you know when we go in the slalom it's somewhat okay it doesn't feel too heavy or something um, and when you're not at really higher speeds it's also better from the steering so this rather vague feeling is more at really high speeds here still at like 70 kilometers an hour um, you know like 40 50 miles an hour that's then still somewhat okay um, but once again i think we can live with that most markets where this car is sold besides germany won't drive uh, that fast with this car anyway so i think that's also actually fine so that was the v90 really loved the experience but now the question is really how does the v60 perform in comparison and which one should you go for With the V60, we'll start in a more agile way because that's actually where we feel the difference. So when cornering here, beautiful roads we have for you here today, then you feel it's just a lighter car, it's a little bit smaller and it's a little bit more fun and engaging to drive. In this case, of course, because we have this Polestar tuning, also the bigger wheels and the stiffer suspension, it feels even sportier for a V60, but it also counts for the general comparison V90 versus V60 that this one here is just more engaging to drive. Once again, if you compare it to the German premium manufacturers, they are more sporty in their orientation and that's absolutely fine. Volvo doesn't have to do that. It's just that here the comparison V60 versus V90, you feel you have more driving fun here. Maybe a little bit less comfort, but that's also a big thing about the seating choice yeah i know the problem once again in the u.s market you only have the animal skin surfaces if you go for fabric seating in the european markets in germany for example you have plenty of choices there then it's also more you know more breathable from the seat and also adapts better to the body and that's also then evening out for this comfort difference so the overall seat form, the ergonomics is also quite good, but like once again, the sport seat here we have today in the V60 is the least comfortable one, both from the surface and from the seating form. The other ones actually do better as for the comfort. Really feeling at a home here, that's also a thing of this vehicle. You start driving and immediately feel at home. And for a second, you know, when you close your eyes, would you forget that you are in a V60 in comparison to the V90? I mean, the interior styling is somewhat different, but definitely it does deliver some kind of different driving feeling. The V90 more like, I'm calm, you know, this is relaxing, let's go for a ride. The V60 is also, a re whoa, that was a older cross-country one, really racing up the hill here. This one here also gives you a sophisticated driving feeling and also keeps you calm and collected and so on but not as much as the V90, so that is the difference. But then on the other side, you get a little bit more engaging drive. And now some countryside driving, and I really enjoy doing that also in the electric mode. So when you have a charging possibility, it makes sense to go with the plug-in hybrid. But just when you have a charging possibility, otherwise, of course, it doesn't make too much sense because when the battery is depleted, the consumption is more or less the same than with a comparable petrol engine for both vehicles so some seven eight liters on one kilometers and that's some between 30 and 40 mpg so once again these engines here are not that efficient that's why they are 
doing this electrification project for the whole Volvo brand and the plug-in hybrids of course help you you know really a lot to save some fuel but once again just when you can do the frequent recharging. Changing the temperature is a little bit hassle while driving here with this touch or with this sliding you can also use the voice command. Set the temperature to 22 degrees. Temperature set to 20 degrees. <laughs> okay, yeah, but you know, you see basically it works. So that would be one possibility to change the temperature without hitting anything there. What is really cool that the pure electric driving is still quite engaging. So when you hit the throttle, then you still can get some response. Just when you hit it too hard, then the combustion engine hops on again. That's the very same. So once again, the drivetrains here, V60 and V90 are totally comparable. Yeah, and especially here in these faster corners, countryside routes, I feel that the V60 is just more engaging to drive. So this is really the question, what is more important to you, driving fun or more this, you know, settled down straight driving with the V90? Yeah, definitely when I think about driving fun, this could be something but then the question is really you're driving profile so do you have more winding corners in your everyday driving life and more narrower surroundings or you rather have long mileage running straight also depend then you know on the country or the, the the state you are in that could be also something you know to to really change the final choice so and now we go to the performance mode once again here in this case it's called Polestar engineered because we have this Polestar tuning here and hey don't I look super fancy here with the yellow seat belts right <laughs> and we once again go from 40 kilometers an hour and accelerate it out here in this case one and a half seconds faster in the acceleration figure 0 to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour if you would pick both T6 versions from the plug-in hybrids, from the recharge models, they would come closer definitely, but here it will be different. Let's find out. Uh, this passed and let's go. One fifty. And one eighty kilometers an hour, one ten miles an hour. That was indeed way quicker. You could also scroll back and see at which point we reached that top speed. And here, of course, first time being the V60, it's just easier to maneuver it also at higher speeds. As for noise insulation, I have the feeling that the V90 was more silent. Or what, you, what would you say? You can also scroll back to the driving part with the V9, uh, V90 and then really compare it. But I, you know, I feel that it's louder in here definitely. However. With the V60 and then even more so with the sporty trim we have here today, just more collected on the road. The steering feeling is as wake as in the V90, so that's really not that good. Don't like the steering feel at all, at higher speeds especially. But the overall feeling here in the V60 is a little bit, yeah, a little bit sporty and more connected to the road if you compare it to the V90. Yeah, but then the question is really which one do you prefer and which one is better for your driving style? I really enjoyed the more driving fun here in the V60. Hmm, yet again it was also super relaxed in the V90. <sighs> this will be a tough choice. Can I make up my mind finally? Or does it depend on where I'm using that vehicle? And now to our conclusion for today, Volvo V90 versus Volvo V60, the big Volvo estate comparison. Well, Volvo has been famous for the estates because they were so bulky and huge in the trunk. That's not the case anymore today. However, you still have enough luggage space, I think, no doubt. Styling-wise, of course, you can pick different, more sophisticated or more sporty stylings. That's, you know, doesn't depend on the very same model. Definitely the styling is more or less the same, especially front and the side. In the rear, the V60 just looks sleeker, the V90 looks a little bit bulkier. However, then also you have just more trunk length in the V90. That's the main difference than exterior length and also the length you have in the interior. The space on the rear bench 
doesn't differ too much. The front cockpit is also not too different. However, seating wise in the front, I do feel a little bit more comfortable in the V90. Driving wise is the biggest difference to me because the V90 just gives you a little bit more sophistication and running straight, just a little bit more comfortable. Whereas the V60 there you feel less weight, a little bit more sportiness. However, Volvo in general is not set on a sporty tone. Maybe today a little bit with this Polestar styling and then it also gets a little bit stiffer from suspension also with bigger wheels and so on. But at the end of the day, the question is, which one should you go for? About 10,000 euros or dollars is the price difference. Entry price is around 40,000 to 50,000, then a little bit expensive, a little more expensive with the V90. Yeah, it's a tough question. Which vehicle I want to take home? I have to say, I would rather go for a low spec V90, get a decent price right there. If you are especially in the US market, they have a little bit more space on the road and so on. In Europe, the V60 is just a little bit more practical as for the size. And there I would also go for them for a mid-trim V60, like a Momentum or Momentum Pro trim, get nice fabric seats, not spec it up too high because our test vehicle prices here for today this is more than 80,000 euros. This is a little bit less than 90,000 euros. And of course, with so much extra equipment, that just gets too expensive, especially then for a V60. So, I have to say, in Europe then, mid-spec V60, in the US, low-spec V90. That's my choice for today. Which one is yours? Tell me in the comments, let's discuss it, and see you at our next comparison review.